Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Memory Protection Devices, we're painting dreams with robots, monitoring our neural activity, and carving pumpkins with CNCs. What? It's Halloween! You don't like my costume? What is your brain up to? Well, you soon will find out with Muse, the new wearable device that lets users monitor neural activity in real time via their mobile device. The headband developed by Toronto-based Interaxon has four integrated sensors, two on the forehead and one behind each ear. The sensors pick up electrical output from the brain and send that data wirelessly to the user's mobile device, where custom algorithms process it into an on-screen display. The app also includes various mental exercises, which the user would be guided through in real time while wearing the headband. So why would anyone care what their brain is up to? According to Interaxon, Muse should help users to relax, concentrate, build confidence, and otherwise take control of their mental state. By being able to see their brain waves represented visually on their smartphone or tablet screens, users can then more easily train themselves to achieve a desired state of mind. Control my mental state of mind? Who says I don't have control over my mental state? Did you say I don't have control over my mental state? Forget the fear over the robot apocalypse, it's already here. Robots are now reading your thoughts and painting your dreams. That's right, this eerie souvenir is a part of the Sleep Art Projects, the latest in a series of hotel offerings patrons never asked for. European hotel chain EBS partnered with ABB's robotics division to place an IRB120 robot into hotels to play the role of the painter. Finally a job for an art major in a down economy and a cyborg snags the gig. ABB's littlest robot transcribes the overnight movements of sleeping guests by using software processed data transmitted by 80 sensors embedded in the mattress. The sensors collect data on temperature, movement, and sound, feeding real-time information into a digital algorithm that the robots convert into a visual interpretation of the energy and motion of sleep. This saying may never be more appropriate, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my nightmare. Running unclassified as an invitational entry for the final round of the American Le Mans series, the Nissan Delta Wing bears a striking resemblance to the vehicle driven by the Cape Crusader. Though the unique 1.6 liter Nissan DIGT machine managed to finish the race three laps down from the winning car, the win was still remarkable as the team had to completely rebuild the car after it was forced into a dramatic rollover in testing after being struck by a GT C-Class Porsche. Featuring half the weight, half the horsepower, and half the aerodynamic drag of a typical Le Mans sports car, the Nissan Delta Wing prototype captured the imagination of fans and media alike at its race debut. The vehicle design is still being met with some skepticism, but it certainly has turned some heads in an effort to legitimize itself in the racing world. Holy innovation, Batman! Have you ever tried one-handed typing? Maybe a one-handed text while walking. It's hard and in some cases dangerous. While students at the University of Alabama in Huntsville have come up with a one-handed solution to solve all of our typing and texting obstacles, the gauntlet, or also known as the generally accessible universal nomadic tactile low-power electronic typist. I'll stick with the gauntlet. The smart glove is a device that sports built-in wireless keyboard functionality. Users can simply touch their thumb onto points on their fingers that are assigned a letter or other keyboard functions. Conductive threads then carry the commands to a matchbox sized PCB affixed to the back of the glove, which then transmits those commands via Bluetooth to multiple devices. Gauntlet could even enable people with disabilities to type more effectively. The students are now seeking a patent to market the product which recently won a $20,000 prize from the Best Buy Innovator Fund among hundreds of entries. Hey, everyone, let's give them a hand. <laughs> Rare earth magnets are important to many, many critical energy technologies. The current supply is concentrated in China, which is limiting production to keep prices high, so we need to find ways to add to our depleted supplies. Scientists at the U.S. Department of Energy's Ames Lab may have found an answer, recycling. The process removes neodymium from the mix of other materials and commercial magnets. Tiny magnet pieces are dropped into a mesh screen box, which is then placed into a stainless steel crucible. Technicians then add, ch add chunks of solid magnesium. 
A radio frequency furnace heats this material and the magnesium begins to melt while the magnet chunks remain solid. The molten magnesium and rare earth mixture is cast and cooled, and then the magnesium is boiled off, leaving the rare earth materials behind. Now here's the exciting part. The recycled materials exhibit the same properties that make rare earths so useful. The next step is optimizing the extraction process and, hopefully, using the process on a larger scale. After which, the technology will most likely be sold to the Chinese. There's something timeless about carving a cheesy grin or a menacing scowl into a pumpkin. But depending on your disposition, this process can be considered time-consuming and messy with relatively little payoff. Now, the art of pumpkin carving is being pulled into the 21st century. Brian, Eric, and Alex Van Dippenboss have developed a CNC machine that carves pumpkins. This machine is still in concept development, but soon talentless pumpkin carvers will bring a pumpkin into the shop to have custom carving done for them on this machine. Practicality? There really is none. But you have to admit, using simple CAD rather than a sharp knife has some appeal, although blood mixed with orange goo keeps the authentic pumpkin carving feel. Do you have story ideas? Comment below or email us and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.